good night just to the professor, Dr. Dr. Gilpin. And tonight we are touching on a topic here, quantum mechanics. And without further delay, I'm going to jump straight into it with introduction to quantum mechanics, basics equation, and from where it all started with me. Quantum mechanics. Now, uh, quantum mechanics related uh, mathematical equation was being solved by me since 1974-1975. And not the delay in 1973 whereby I had a whole year wasted, I would have been more advanced in quantum mechanics, but due to a change of policy, in the schools, I lost one year of related calculus or pure mathematics, calculus, and uh, other Cambridge science subject. I call it stunted growth, and it was a, a waste. Nevertheless, I came back in 1974 and did something that I should have done early on. This is another just to an athlete preparing for a race, put out all his energy during training and being told that he's not going to run that race. After he has trained the whole year for running that race, he cannot run that race. Wasted energy, wasted time. But such was the, the case. This is now an intellectual athlete not really exercising the physical, but the mind, and it was wasted. So I, I was to, didn't put out so much energy the following year and still came out with a lot of distinctions in science. But when I should have been doing more advanced work, I was dropped back. Quantum mechanics. Okay, so my early years of solving second order differential equation and partial differential equation like I said started off back doing uh, Cambridge advanced level two point and four point mathematics advanced level physics and advanced level chemistry and the introduction to second order differential equation and partial differential equation and surely the Schrodinger equation I came up seeing it but we just solve it mathematically anyhow but we started from basic simple harmonic motion to complex motion relativistic motion simple harmonic motion and uh, more uh, advanced motion. But let me just uh, start off here with the Schrodinger equation. Like I said, uh, we about in 74, 75, 76, and then in science at City College doing chemistry, that's was where you see the Schrodinger equation came in up, uh, that pops up a lot. But we're looking at quantum mechanics and let's give a definition of quantum mechanics. Call it QM for short. Where quantum mechanics is uh, the physics of subatomic and atomic light matter. 
the physics of subatomic and atomic light and matter. I think probably we should have had sound in it as well because sound traveled by waves. Uh, uh, but uh, they mostly want to deal with light at this moment. So we have it as the physics of subatomic and atomic light and matter. We're going to analyze the motion and the properties of that. And so we say here now, uh, I'm starting off with the Schrodinger equation. And the Schrodinger equation in physics for a light wave electric field and we call that now E of X and T. E, this is where I'm starting now, of X and T. But let's uh, sort of define certain parameters here before we go into it. So we have E We have P equals momentum. M equals mass. Well, T is time. Sometimes we'll be doing time dependent, and sometimes we'll be looking at time independent uh, properties, motions. And U equals potential energy. Well, I uh, will uh, put more parameters here as we go on. Uh, e is a uh, So we have E of X and T. And E of X and T obeys the relation now uh, that partial partial square E by partial X square is equal to 1 over C square and here we have C the velocity of light or light partial square e by partial t square so these are no partial differential equation we might sometimes be all one parameter constant and uh, differentiate with uh, respect So what I would know as partial square e by partial x square equals 1 over c square partial square e by partial t square. This is the way we are starting at. So we have c equals velocity or, or speed of light. It's a difference between speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity whereas Velocity is a vector quantity, a vector parameter. Then it's a partial derivative and E, say no, the absolute value of E of X of T square
and this can be a, a probability density function. A probability density function of uh, a single photon at a particular point in space. The probability density function of a single photon at a particular point in space. For example, on a viewing screen. Let me just take a little pause here to tell that uh, for about uh, over 10 years now I've been doing uh, observance of lightning and I've made a, a lot of logs of lightning, the phenomenon of lightning, because you know lightning is a, a lot of photons there. And that's my viewing screen. Uh, that was like uh, in a natural laboratory, just looking at uh, lightning, wherever I go, if I, I'm in the island, if I'm in California, if I'm in New York, if I'm in New Jersey, whenever a lightning strike, I drop down the time and I have it as something called IPE. And those of you who want to research me will see that I've had a lot of... Uh, documentation and IP, which I call integrated photons emission. Integrated photons emissions. And that is my term. I coined that term which is the phenomenon of lightning. It's integrated, it's also discrete, so you could call it discrete and integrated photons emission. This piece is when you uh, differentiate and divide up uh, this, uh, this lightning into photons and one particular photon, discrete, will be one photon. And when you see the whole mass of it, I, that's integration. That's a, I call it integrated photons emission. And there's a lot of documentation of me on this integrated photon emission. That's just an aside here, uh, how we're dealing with quantum mechanics here, quantum physics. I know there are many solutions to the, that equation there. And one of the solution is uh, E of X and T is equal to A sine The lightning is very poor in this uh, room so pardon me for the light in here. Minus omega t. Kx. Can also define k here. K is equal to K look actually constantly already, but uh will come to give it a more precise uh, 
definition relative to this equation, you have x of t equal to a sine k x minus omega t. And uh, where a is the amplitude of the electric field, a amplitude of the electric field. And k is a wave number. So we have k equals wave number. So now we have the k and the a, amplitude of the electric field, and k the wave number. This was just an aside here. Uh, integrated and discrete photons emission. And omega is the angular frequency, so we have omega now, equals the angular frequency And so if you combine the two equations, which relates to the two equations now, what we'll get is uh, k squared, that is the wave number squared is equal to Omega square over C square. And according to the, uh, the Borgu equation, we we'll have know that. Uh, sorry for the poor lightning here, that P, which is the momentum, is equal to mk wave number m mass and uh, E equals H omega. And substituting these two equations, this looks like a h here, hk and h omega. Substituting these two equation here, we will have uh, give us know that uh, p is equal to E over C by appropriate substitution. Or that E is equal to PC. That's simple making uh, E the subject of the formula. Now if according to Einstein, uh, general energy momentum equation uh, this describes particle with zero rest mass. So right here, according to Einstein,
energy momentum This uh, described now particle with zero rest mass. Excuse the very poor lightning here tonight, but let us do our very best with the poor lightning condition here. Yeah? Now, the energy of a non relativistic uh, particle in one dimension, the energy of a non relativistic particle in one dimension is given by now E equals two N plus U, which is the potential energy of X and T Let's call it equation one here, how we're going to be referring back to it. And then the momentum M, or moment mass is M, momentum P. And M equals mass mass, momentum, so it's P squared over 2N, potential energy, potential energy, X of T, particle, and with respect to time. We'll be looking at some time-independent uh, equation here too, but this one is time-dependent. And M equals mass, and U equals potential energy of the, of the particle. Now the time dependent equation that goes also with this is the Schrodinger time dependent equation. So we we'll look at the Schrodinger part, uh, time dependent equation and since uh, we want to focus on it, we're not going to put it at the bottom here. We're going to uh, put it on a new piece of paper. Uh, but before we do that, we'll take a break. So we'll uh, continue with the Schrodinger time-dependent equation.